Don't let the heat keep you and your family from diving into fun this summer. Visit hcparkandrec.com for details and see you at the pool. Hey everybody, it's Bill Otto inviting you to join me in the Oldies Attic Saturday mornings between 9 and noon. And you'll have a chance to win Cool Dad Lottery tickets while listening to some great music. It's the new instant game from the Pennsylvania Lottery. Cool Dad features 10 top prizes of $100,000. Pennsylvania Lottery instant games benefit older Pennsylvanians every day. Remember, you must be 18 years or older to play. Please play responsibly. The Pennsylvania Lottery generated more than a billion dollars last year for programs that benefit older Pennsylvanians. 8.12 in the morning, it is Indiana in the morning, and it's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. Look at the uh, crew I have gathered here in the studio this morning. Rob Heinrich is the uh, superintendent of the Indiana Area School District. Walter Schroth with us. He is the president of the Indiana Area School Board. Our conversation is brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Good morning, morning, Todd. It's good to have you both with us here today. Uh, We want to talk about something that every school board is dealing with, every school district is dealing with. Uh, um, Yours is an an interesting circumstance, though, Uh, and, and so we want to visit the topic of budgets, taxes and and um, that whole thing that every june uh, every school district is forced to make some decisions without full information <laughs> and uh, uh, and it's an awfully difficult job because you don't know what the state subsidies are going to be uh and and then you take a hit um and uh, you could be cruising along in in your in your little boxing match of a school district and and thinking that you're doing well and scoring points and all of a sudden somebody with the puncher's chance gets you on the chin and knocks you down a little bit uh and and that in a sense is what happened uh, to indiana during the budget process this year absolutely uh you know this de- this budget crisis has been brewing for a couple of years now but now it's really come to a head over this last year we've had dramatic increase in costs across the board Um, And the revenue just hasn't been able to keep up, which has created a significant deficit that uh, the school board and I have to figure out how to fix. Yeah, yeah. To to add to that, Todd, um, you you know, uh, we have an armed guard in every building right now, plus an arrangement with the borough and our normal security stuff. So we're spending a half a million dollars a year in security that we didn't spend five, five years ago. Yeah. Um, we're also looking at, um, charter cyber costs that have more than doubled in that same five year period for the same 90 students that the charter cyber serve. I want to focus in on that just a little bit. Just, just take a segment here and and talk about what that means, because I, I'm, I'm guessing that 90% of those, uh, who are paying taxes in a school district have no idea what that means. Well, they should, Tuck, because it's a, it's a terrible situation. So what happens is there are schools that are chartered by the state of Pennsylvania. That's why we call them charter schools. Um, they teach online. So these cyber schools that are chartered by the state are um, located in Philadelphia and Harrisburg. But the way they are funded is through local tax bases like ours, where a student doesn't like uh, Indiana Area School District anymore, so they go to this outside cyber charter school where our tax money that is dedicated to teach our students here then gets funneled to Harrisburg or Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And I would love to say it's they're getting the same experience on the cyber charter, but it's just not the case. The case is that they, they're online learning. We've seen that that's not as effective as in-person. They have fewer options. They have less of a social experience, and they, quite frankly, have much more – disappointing outcomes when they typically, and I don't want to say, I don't want to you know, paint too wide a brush here, but typically the average student has less positive outcomes when they go to that. So it's a it's a drain on the tax base here, and it's to the tune of $1.7 million of Indiana tax money last year alone. Yeah, and, and Walter, it, it, the interesting thing about that to me is that, uh, A, you don't know what that cost is going to be until the bill comes in. Uh, and, and see, you have no control over what that cost is going to be anyway. That That is correct. You just got to pay. That is correct. And, you know, five years ago, we had about 90 students in charter in those same charter cybers that Rob was talking about, and this year we have about 90. The bill this year, as he said, is $1.7, $1.8 million. 
five years ago, the bill was 800000 So between 900000 and a million dollars, we've seen an increase that, as you pointed out, we have no control over. And the government has uh, some legislation that they're entertaining to cap that uh, what we pay for cyber charters. And mm-hmm. we definitely would encourage people to, uh, if they get a chance to bend someone's ear about that, please do that because yeah. that, that money needs to stay locally. They need to figure out a different way to fund those cyber charter schools because they're just not providing the same services, but they're getting the same, the same uh, costs or the same financial support that our school is getting. So until that happens, you are left holding that bag, and, and you're going to have to fill it up. Uh, and uh, budgets have holes in them. Those it, holes widen when you have stuff like this happening, it, and, and you got to find the solutions. And the other problem that we've been faced with, Todd, is um, the assessed value of certain commercial properties in the district has fallen dramatically, and this is for two reasons. Number one, the change in purchasing habits that we as a society have. The Regency Mall, or not the Regency, but the Indiana Mall, uh, the assessed value on it in in the last five years has, has been reduced by a third of what it was originally. That's a direct hit to our uh, tax revenue. Mm-hmm. The, with the decline in enrollment at IUP, again, not not our fault, nothing we can do about it, a lot of the commercial housing operations have also gone in for reassessments. The net total over the last five years was $1 million loss in direct revenue to to the district because of those reassessments. Now, from the individual uh, owner's point of view, yes, they were certainly justified, but it has a dramatic impact on our ability to fund our schools. All right, so we need to close the gap solutions. How do you close a gap like that when you have to come up with a budget that is going to meet all the obligations? Well, the first thing we do is we cut spending as much as we can. And this board has been very aggressive in that. We just cut $1.1 million out of the budget from last year to this year. And they've done this every year. They've been good stewards of the taxpayers' money. Over the past 10 years, we've reduced the teaching staff in this district by 33 teachers Well, the enrollment has not dropped at all. In fact, it's gone up 14 students from 10 years ago. So Mm -hmm. we've been able to improve our our educational programming and expand the opportunities for our kids whilst, you know, reducing the staff at the same time. So uh, we've done a pretty good job of of trying to do this. When people say, why don't you spend less? We are spending less. We're Mm -hmm. trying in every way, shape, or form to uh, be more efficient and effective with the taxpayer's money. Is that a pretty fine line to walk, Rob? Oh, it's a tremendously fine line to walk, and it's a difficult, difficult exercise that we participate in. Every time someone retires, we look at the position and we decide, is this position necessary? Can we do this with the uh, the other pieces that remain on the table? And it's not fun work, but it's important work. So when you look at 33 uh, teachers that are, are no longer with the district, and we did this by attrition, if you figure $100,000 just for rough planning purposes, that's reducing our expenditures by $3.3 million. Now, it's actually a little more than that, so it could be closer to 3 to $4 million that we've actually cut our expenditures. So, so Rob is right. Uh, for the naysayers that are, are complaining that we're not trying to manage our costs, we absolutely are. Mm-hmm. The question then, Todd, becomes one. We've got maybe another three positions over the next several years that we'll be able to work with, but after that, then the question is, um, where do we go from there as far as reducing that? And the only way you do that is to reduce some sort of a program. And I'll let Rob yeah, speak and, to that. And, and we want to avoid that, right? We want to give students, we want to expand the opportunities for students, not reduce them. So if we can reduce staff and, and be more efficient and effective, sure. However, we want to make sure that if a student's interested in tech ed, they can have tech ed. If, if art is what brings them to school every day, they get their art or their music or mm-hmm. or world language or whatever it might be that other school districts have been forced to cut. We want to make sure that, you know, Indiana School District has the best educational program in the area because that's what brings people to this community. And you also have to be cognizant of the fact that uh, teachers are human beings, that oh. uh, you add to the burden that they, that they have on a daily class load or – uh, the number of students that they're teaching, uh, whatever, however you programmatically approach it, uh, that will 
have a bearing on on the teachers themselves, and and you have to be very very sensitive to that. One hundred percent, and that's another narrative that's out there that the, that the teachers make too much money. I will say this: our teachers are well compensated in this district, and they should be because the expectations that we put on them when we reduce the staff by thirty three, that work has to be distributed across the board, and they've stepped up and done a great job. We also have uh, higher expectations for them dealing with behaviors in the classroom since COVID. We've had this mental health crisis across the, the state, across the nation, that has resulted in some explosive behaviors from our students. So it's, you know, we still have those high expectations for academic performance with less people to do it and uh, compounded by the fact that we have more behaviors in the classrooms than ever before. So what we ask those teachers to do is a significant, uh, significantly important and difficult job. So they are fairly compensated. They're not even the highest compensated in the county anymore. Um, but they, you know, what they earn, they earn. Trust me. <laughs> Rob Heinrich is the superintendent of the Indiana Area School District. Walter Schroth, president of the school board. So, Walter, you have to come up every year with a basically a new formula. Okay, what are the obligations? What are the revenue sources? How do we raise the money to close that gap? Is it through uh, program cuts? Is it through um, some innovative uh, techniques? Is it through um, uh, raising taxes, and you you have to do that every darn single year, and you have to do it again this year. Absolutely, Todd. And as as Rob said, we're really trying very desperately to avoid any program um, uh, major program cuts. Um, we've we've tried to be more effective and more efficient in in the allocation of our resources, the hiring of our teachers, and the the delivery system, the way we deliver our education. I'm not sure that the $6 million that we're looking at, which really is a $4 million bogey, is something that we can simply tax our way out of, but it's also not something that we can cut our way out of or reduce our cost out of. Mm -hmm. It's really going to take a combination of both, and it may be something that we don't just solve this year, but we implement a certain portion of it this year, and then a, a follow-up portion maybe next year or the following year. Does the future of the Horace Mann School have any effect on all of these deliberations? It, it actually has already. Uh, some of the cuts or some of the reductions in our spending that we've been able to realize from last year to this year are a direct result of some of the things we're doing at Horace Mann. Down the road, Mr. Schroth mentioned that we may be able to reduce staff, a few more teachers, you know, three or four more staff members, uh, uh, maybe a custodian here or there. Um, because when we consolidate into one building, that's there's going to be less staff necessary to, to run that educational programming. So we hope to realize some more savings that way. We're also going to continue to write grants. We're going to continue to lobby our politicians. I mean, again, not to beat the cyber charter school horse to death, but um, that $1.7 million that we're spending is roughly about the same that we're recommending in tax increases. So if that money was in our coffers, this tax increase wouldn't be necessary, you know. So, yeah. this is, uh, you know, it's a it's a complex problem, but we're going to have to, as Mr. Schroth said, do it by raising taxes and by cutting costs wherever possible. Yeah, yeah. And and, and, and folks, and Todd, 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 we recognize that for some people, particularly those retirees on fixed income, you know, the 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 cost of this tax increase on the average can still be a very very um, uh, large burden from them, sure. even though for people that may be still working or have young kids or whatever, it may not they they may not feel the the burden as bad. And we certainly have a lot of empathy for those people. But the point I would want to make is that there's three million dollars of expenses and or losses in revenues that we've not been able to control uh, because it's beyond our control. Um, that is really driving this issue, and and we have to do something. Yeah. The question is what? Yeah, yeah. It's it's complicated. It is uh, frustrating. I know from everybody's standpoint, uh, but it's there, and it, it has yeah. to be dealt with. And I do want to say, like, no one wants to raise taxes. I don't think there's a single board member that sits on Indiana School Board that wants to raise taxes. They need to raise taxes. That's where we are. And. And it comes to about $2.50 for the average homeowner. Now, as Mr. Schroth said, again, people on fixed income, that's a big deal for some of us. It's a, a very big deal. But as far as spreading that load across the, the entire community, it's something that is not, you know, 
unmanageable for, for most of our families. So, yeah. um, and we'll continue to work with those that it is a, a burden. And, and for six years, Todd, we went without a tax increase because we didn't think it was necessary. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the, some arguments can be made that, well, maybe you should have raised them every year. Well, there's also the counter argument, you should only raise them when you have to. And, and, and that's kind of the position we've taken. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, very, very complex, very difficult problem to deal with your district. Every other district is having to make the same sorts of deliberations and, and decisions. Gentlemen, I want to thank you both for coming in and visiting with us today to explain uh, what is uh, a problem that is on the minds of a whole bunch of people. <laughs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> well, thank you for having us, Todd. I appreciate that time. Budget on display for folks to take a look at now? Absolutely. On the website, yep. And then, and then June the 24th, is when we will have the the final deliberation on where that tax rate will actually be, even though the uh, the radio station and the newspaper reported six point eight, the budget is based on that that rate of taxes. That doesn't mean that when we finally figure this out on June the twenty fourth again, whether that 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 will be the final rate. That's why they call it tentative. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, WCCSradio.com. Boomer Sports next. Thank you. you. This is Andrew Perloff with a Sports Minute. Olympic fans, prepare for the sticker shock. The July 26th opening ceremony will see 300000 for the Parade of Nations along the Seine River. Seats cost a minimum of 